You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Subscribe to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Cilio: Tales of a New Dawn. I really, really, really wanted to go ahead and do another video on this because I have got to know what happens. Seriously, I've got to know what happens. There's such a cliffhanger in the last episode. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes while I entertain you. Let's jump right in. Oh, God, I hope this isn't going to be horrifying. All right. <clears throat> All right. The three of us burst from the room and began sprinting as quickly as our legs would carry us. The creature's rapid, heavy footsteps trailed close behind. I dared not look back, fearing what I might see and instead continuing to run. As I went, I had to take great care to avoid tripping over bottles. Somehow it seemed as though they had, they had multiplied and were now littering the ground, covering almost every inch of the cobblestone. There was no time to be careful, however, as the presence was hot on my heels. I continued to run as quickly as I could, and I hoped that my shoes were strong enough to repel any shards of broken glass I might stand on. Finally arrived at the ladder where Dom was already halfway up, and Axel was just beginning to climb himself. Climb faster! It's nearly here! Dom disappeared over the top as Axel began to lift himself onto the floor above. I jumped on the ladder as, I quickly, as quickly as I could and began climbing. But it was too late! What the f- Whoa, that is different. What's the rush? Stay a while, join your friend. So this was not what I expected. Wait, what? Wait, what? Huh? Were you dreaming? Brian! Brian, come on! H huh? There's a customer and you're sleeping at your di- You s- mm! What a fake out! Oh my god. <laughs> Crow character looked pretty cool though. I wonder if he figures in later. Interesting. I lifted my head from the table and looked around. I was at work. Over in the corner, Lucas and Eric were fussing with the printer and the guillotine sat before me. A half- a half cut piece of paper resting beneath its blade. Was it all a dream? The whole thing was so real, yet so bizarre, it couldn't possibly have been anything but. I must have been much more tired than I thought. I noticed that, as Dom had said, someone else was in the room with us, talking with Lucas in a rather subdued manner as Lucas alternated his scowl between the customer and the printer. After a brief conversation, the man turned to leave, but stopped in his tracks, having spotted me. There was something eerily familiar about him. He walked over to me. Oh, shit! Well, then. Brian, I presume. H huh? You work for Ty as well as Lucas, do you not? What a busy life you must lead. I could have sworn I'd seen him somewhere before. Ah, oh, but I don't mean to interrupt your hard work. Please, accept my apologies. The raven bowed courteously before taking his leave. My eyes followed him as he exited the room, and then it suddenly clicked. Was it him that was following us in that dungeon? Perhaps I'd disturbed him in my sleep and unknowingly included him in my dream? At least I thought it was him. That was just too strange. I turned to Dom, who seemed considerably more unfazed than I. Who the hell was that? Oh, that's Spencer. It's rare seeing him out and about, so I'm not, su I'm not surprised you haven't met him yet. Huh, any idea why? None, although I believe he's an associate of Ty's. He knows Lucas by extension, I think. I'm not really sure I know. I'm not really sure how, though. Huh. I made a mental note to ask Ty about the Spencer the next opportunity I had. And Lucas didn't notice me sleeping, did he? I think he's a little preoccupied with the printer right now. I gazed over, at, over towards Lucas and Eric. It's working! It's... jammed. What? Yep. Sorry, boss. Lucas grabbed the printer by the sides and mightily tipped it to the floor with a loud crash of the sound of breaking glass. Eric, we're going printer shopping! Roger that, hot stuff! One more word out of you and I'll punch you to the moon, I swear! Okay, this makes more sense. Thank god the two of them were back to normal. Oh, hey, by the way. Yeah? I managed to talk Axel into exploring the abandoned building this afternoon, so I was wondering if- Nope! Huh? I mean, no thank you. Uh, Diego and I have plans this afternoon. Oh, that's a shame. Oh well, I'll be sure to let you know what we find. Have fun! Don't die! Uh, we'll try not to, I guess. Phew, that was a close one. I didn't have any plans, but I prefer boredom over, well, whatever it was I just dreamed up. Real or no, I didn't want to take any chances. I took the time to finish cutting my flyers, clocking out, and left the building. I mean, okay. Diego time, ooh-woo. I had arrived home to find Diego in the midst of preparations to go somewhere. 
Neither of us had any plans for the afternoon, so I was curious where he might be going. Where are you off to? Brian, great timing. I was getting ready to head to Ty's. He's offered to spar with me and show me some tricks. Do you want to come? Sounds like fun, actually. Count me in. Great. Change out of those work clothes and into something more comfortable, then let's go. And it is instructed met with Diego at the front door before the two of us set off in the direction of Ty's. Well, this is Ty's place. I assume you ain't been here before. Uh, well, of course I had been here. I, su I suppose the cat was already out of the bag, so telling him couldn't hurt. This is where I met with Ty yesterday, and where he put me onto the whole tournament idea. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Come, let's not keep him waiting. Diego rang the doorbell. Several seconds went by before the door swung open. Ah, nice. Gentlemen, good to see you as always. Shall we? We shall. Follow me. Ty led us into his house and through a small doorway, which led us down into his basement. Great. More basements. Thankfully, this one was a lot less horrifying than the last. The basement was equipped with a fighting ring, punching bags, several varieties of weights, and multiple workout machines. Sheesh. Puts our home gym to shame, huh, Brian? It does a little. The fruits of many years of hard labor, I can assure you. That being said, the two of you are most welcome to use it at your leisure. Now then, Diego, if you would so kindly enter the ring, I would very much like to see what you have got. As long as you don't fire me when I kick your ass. Diego obeyed Ty's request, and the two of them entered the ring on opposite corners. Ty counted the match in before they both began approaching one another. Once in proximity, Diego threw a couple of jabs, which seemed to stop dead and dead against hard muscle. Noticing this, Diego adapted to a different approach and tried to sweep his leg under Ty in order to trip him up. Ty stumbled slightly, but managed to stay standing. Diego then tried several punches aimed at his gut and sides. Ty clearly felt these blows, but nonetheless retained his composure. It struck me that Ty hadn't yet dealt a single blow. Diego continued throwing punches and jabs at him, fighting rather aggressively, but seeming, but seeming to have barely made a dent in Ty's constitution. Eventually, Diego began panting while Ty hadn't broken a sweat. Several more minutes of this went by. Diego was breathing heavily and clearly frustrated by his inability to so much as get a response to his blows. It took me a complete it took me by a complete surprise when Ty finally retaliated with a leg sweep of his own, sending Diego toppling to the floor while Ty pinned him down. I am victorious. Looks to me as though there's plenty that I can teach you. Huh! Huh! Shit! The two of them exited the ring and approached me. That was good, Diego. Well done. What the hell, man? It's like you barely felt it. Diego poked Ty's belly, causing him to flinch. I believe I will have some bruises in the morning. Really? Indeed. It seemed Ty had felt it after all. Was that a strategy? To take a beating and let his opponent tire themselves out? While Ty certainly took most of the damage, it won him the round. An opponent such as myself fights very conservatively. I'm not small enough or fast enough to evade, but I am big enough to take quite a few hits. You see, should I not respond, the average opponent will grow frustrated. This causes them to overexert themselves and thus become vulnerable. It is a strategy that has served me well, but certainly one that takes a toll on my body. Sorry if I was a little rough. Please, would I have invited you here if I had thought you were going to take it easy? You are quite, str you are quite strong as things stand. I would of course encourage you to continue owning that strength. But today should be about strategy. You will no doubt encounter a variety of different combatants in the tournament, each with their own approach to fighting need to recognize their strategies and identify their weaknesses. Oh yeah? What's your weakness, then? The worst opponent I could ever face is somebody who fights exactly as I do. Something has to give if neither side will throw a punch. Well, this talk gave me an idea, specifically what Ty had said about not being small enough or fast enough to evade. I was by far the smallest person in the room. I wondered. Hey Ty, mind if I take this next round against Diego? Hmm? I was unaware you fought. I don't, but mind, it might be fun. Are you sure? I don't want to hurt you. You are assuming that you can. Forget I will forget what I said. You're going down. Take care not to rough him up too much, Diego. Diego and I both entered the ring. Ty gave us our countdown before we closed the distance between us. Diego was fighting more cautiously than before. Perhaps he'd learned something. Or perhaps he was holding back. Whichever it was would be his undoing. He took his first swing, well telegraphed by the movement of his right arm. I definitely slipped out of the way before bouncing back. In the opposite direction to avoid him swinging from the other side. Diego scowled. 
Next, he prepared to sweep, which I dodged by hopping over his leg as it came beneath me. This time, I grin a grin spread across Diego's face, causing me to grow somewhat concerned. He followed this up with several jabs, each easily evaded. He then prepared another jab. I moved to dodge it, only to be swept off my feet and pinned. In what seemed like record time, the round was over. Well done, well done. Brian, you slippery shit. Diego, did you seriously just fake me out? I did. I guess I was giving my moves away in time for you to dodge them. So I continued for a little bit, then pretended to do a jab when I was actually going to sweep you. Can't believe it worked. That was wonderful, Diego. You took a weakness of yours and made it into a strength. That is exactly the kind of strategic fighting you will need to win the tournament. Seriously, though, Brian, you're actually surprisingly good at this. As if I didn't land a single blow. So, anyway, who's keen for another bout? I will take this dance. Hop into the ring. I'll teach you another strategy. Deal. The two continued to spar over the course of the next hour or so, with Diego's performance steadily improving from round to round. On several occasions, he even managed to win. Eventually, however, his performance began to suffer, likely due to exhaustion, and with that, we all agreed to call it a day. I would say today has been most fruitful indeed. You are a quick learner. Good thing, too. The tournament starts soon. If I didn't learn quickly, I'll be in a lot of trouble. Well, sh well, should you wish to spar again, I'm happy to make time whenever I am not running the bar. Please keep on top of your training. Be sure to eat well and get plenty of rest, too. I have faith you'll be fighting, in no fighting fit in no time at all. Thanks, Ty. Well, Brian, shall we head home? I remembered my encounter with Spencer earlier in the day. I felt as though this were a good time of any to ask about it. Soon, there's something I need to ask Ty first. Oh? Do you know a guy called Spencer? Spencer, I do indeed. I'm curious as to how you know him. Is that so strange? He came into work at Lucas's earlier. He seemed to know about me. Did he now? Spencer is, well, he's complicated. It's probably for the best that you give him a wide berth. Ty's answer had only raised more questions, but I got the sense that Ty was unwilling to say more. I decided against pressing the issue. Ready to go? Yep, thank you for today, Ty. It's been my pleasure. What was that all about? Like I said, he came into work earlier and seemed to know me, and something just seems... something, And something about him just seems off. Dom said Ty knows him, so I thought I'd so I thought to ask. It didn't seem like you wanted to talk about it. I know. I'm only more curious now. You've never met the guy? I don't think so. What does he look like? Very distinctive. He's a raven. Jet black feathers, fancy clothes, red eyes. Oh, I've seen a guy like that at Ty's before. Never really spoken to him, though. When he visits, they usually go off somewhere together. He's kind of creepy, though, right? My thoughts exactly. Anyway, I guess we should be getting home. Let's. Huh. Phew. Finally home. I'm beat. You were, you were though. Ty kicked your ass most of the time. Hey, well, I'm rusty. Just means I need to work, out, work hard to get better before I have to fight for real. But for now, we celebrate. Diogo disappeared into the kitchen while I took a seat on the couch. When he returned, he did so carrying a bag full of alcohol. Seeing that made my blood run cold, if only for a moment. My mind had flashed back to the dream I'd had earlier, and that dream Diego had drank way too much and wound up dead. While those two aspects were possibly unrelated, I couldn't help but wonder if my brain had intended it to be symbolic. Perhaps it was a subconscious representation of my fears. The fear of losing Diego chiefly among them, and the possibility that he is drinking might act as the catalyst for such a fear to come to fruition. Whenever Diego drank, he went all in. Social drinking wasn't a possibility for him. Rather, it couldn't be considered a good night unless it ended in a blackout. And considering he had brought the entire b bag of booze with him, I knew that was exactly where tonight was going to head if I didn't put a stop to it. What do you fancy? Uh, I decided that at least in the beginning I'd give Diego the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he wasn't shooting for a blackout. Besides, a few drinks couldn't hurt. Perhaps I could rein him in. I requested a glass of cherry liquor mixed with cola. Diego obliged, mixed my drink, and handed it to me. A toast to a successful day's training and to many more ahead. Cheers! The two of us clinked our glasses together and began to work and began to work on our drinks began slowly, taking several more sips, taking several smaller sips. I suppose it shouldn't have been shocking that Diego had shotgunned the first glass and was already preparing his second. Jeez, dude, I'm way ahead of you. You gotta keep up. Considering the dream I'd had, the whole situation, this whole situation was causing me to grow more and more anxious by the minute. Diego lifted his second glass to his lips and took several large gulps before standing up. I need a bathroom break. Back in a sec. Diego made his way out of the room and down the hall. Looking back at my drink, I recalled those pills Ty had given me. What if perhaps they would be useful? 
made my way down the hall, sneaking past the bathroom into the spare room where I grabbed the pills on my nightstand. Upon my return, I dropped one in my drink and watched it fizz away. I heard the sound of the bathroom door and was anxious my pill was anxious my pill wouldn't dissolve in time. I stirred the drink with my finger, causing the, the pill to fizz a little more violently. By the time Diego had returned, the last of the pill fizzed away. I breathed a sigh of relief as Diego sat down beside me. Back! Now where was I? Diego finished the last few drops of his second glass. This was followed by a third glass, and a fourth, and even a fifth. And with each, Diego had prepared for another for me as well, clearly pushing for me to keep pace. I held my tongue thus far, but could already see how things were shaping up. And unless Diego left the room again, I wouldn't be able to use the pills. Diego was showing signs of intoxication. I decided the best thing I could do was to speak up and attempt to avoid the inevitable. Diego, would it be okay if I asked if we could stop here for the night? Yep, Diego's got a problem. Huh? Well, what are you ta 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 taking about? I mean, five glasses in less than ten minutes? That's an awful lot. Why do you drink like you do, Diego? Because it's fun! But is blacking out every time fun? Is the hangover fun? I mean, no, but it's fun until that point. Diego, I knew what I was about to say was unlikely to be received warmly, but I plucked up the courage to stand up by my, by my convictions and say it anyway. Drinking like this? It's not healthy. Not physically or mentally, and the fact that you keep pressure you, you pressure me to keep it up it makes me uncomfortable. I still had yet to finish my first glass, and there were already four more lined up for me. What? I don't force you. If you don't want it, don't drink it. This wasn't the first time I'd felt pressured by Diego to drink more. I recalled the night after I worked up work with Lucas for the first time. He pushed more and more on me, and then... Well, that happened. It wasn't a terrible outcome by any means, but there was nothing to say other than say another blackout wouldn't result in consequences the next time around. You have forced me before, Diego, and you're kind of doing it now, too. I'm just worried. Worried we'll get into trouble or do something we regret. And I'm also worried you might drink as much as you do for the wrong reasons. What do you mean, wrong reasons? I worry that you're drinking to forget. Forget what? The breakup, Kyrex, your emotions, and your pain. Silence fell between the two of us for what felt like an eternity. Diego had begun to prepare his sixth glass, having poured the spirit, but hadn't yet but hadn't yet gotten around to mixing it. You're still hurting a lot, I know that. I know that alcohol can seem like a temporary reprieve, but trust me, it's not, and it makes us worry. Us? It's not just me. Ty's worried about you, too, and I'm sure we're not alone. Ty does an awful lot of butting into my life. He's concerned for you all. Is He's concerned for you as all. He cares about you. I care about you. Diego picked up his glass and took the shot straight before turning to me. I'm sick of everyone else thinking they know what's best for me. I'm dealing with this my own way. It's nobody else's business. Diego's mood had grown somewhat sour. He was typically a happy drunk, however, the topic of conversation seemed to have altered that. We just, we want to help. I, I want to help. I care about you, Diego. I really, really care about you. His eyes seemed to pierce into my soul. He was silent for a good while as, he, as though he was waiting for me to say something more. I'm sorry, I know this seems kind of out of the blue. It is. The thing yesterday? The thing yesterday. I appreciated it. But it feels like you're keeping secrets from me. You're scurrying about behind my back. If it was just one thing, I'd be fine. But it's not, is it? Now you and Ty are having off discussions about my drinking. What else did he say? Did he tell you about Kyrex? Did you already know... Did you already know before I told you? All right, I'm going to pause it right here before this gets too heavy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribing that notification bell. If you super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!